Without giving it much thought, it is realistic enough to say that Sweden has some of the best attractions in Europe, ranging from ancient to urban life. It has caught the attention of many world explorers because of its extensive history and diverse scenery. In this video, we'll take you through a fun-filled adventure as we delve into the history, culture, and natural beauty of the fifth largest country in Europe. First up is Gothenburg. Gothenburg, the second largest city in the nation, maintains its elegance despite Stockholm's glitz taking center stage. With its old space reinvented, the city is now home to Michelin star restaurants lining the streets and rusty warehouses that have been converted into art galleries. This city is one of the most popular destinations in Sweden because of the calm and vibrant streets at night and its close proximity to nearby islands. Generally, it's a pleasant city on Sweden's west coast with a thriving cultural scene, top-notch dining options, sustainable living, and a rich history all within walking distance. Additionally, it has huge open spaces and enchanted archipelago islands just waiting to be explored. Hence, adventure is never far away. Next we have Drottningholm Palace. One of the most well-known castles and palaces in all of Sweden is located on the Lovo Island. The Swedish royal family currently resides at the Drottningholm Palace, which was built during the 16th century. The palace and its gardens, however, are accessible to the public in large parts. One of Sweden's top architectural attractions is the Chinese pavilion in the gardens, which is stunning. The palace today serves as the Swedish royal family's official residence. Bronze sculptures from Denmark and Bohemia that were brought back as war trophies are displayed in the lovely terraced park. Summer performances have been held at the Drottningholms Palace Theater since the 18th century. You may see historical theatrical costumes and set designs in the theater museum. And now for the Vasa Museum. The Vasa Museum is situated in Stockholm, a sizable royal park in the Ost Malm neighborhood. The museum is frequently cited as one of the best in the capital city of Sweden, which is home to many other good museums. The Vasa, a completely restored Swedish battleship from the 17th century, is on display as the first exhibit of the Vasa Museum. Vasa, which was expertly restored after being rescued from the water in 1961, provides amazing insight into marine life and industry in the 17th century. Furthermore, it has been one of Stockholm's top attractions, and it is unlikely that demand will ever decline. Just viewing the ship up near and personal is quite amazing and full of intriguing history. Interestingly, the museum now draws close to a million people a year. Since the museum opened in 1990, more than 20 million people have visited and it is easy to understand why. The 64-gun battleship Vasa, which is the pride of the Swedish Imperial Fleet, can be found in the museum. Before a hugely complex salvage operation was carried out in 1961, the ship had been submerged in frigid waters for more more than three centuries. These days, travelers from all over the globe travel to see this intriguing time capsule. Up next is Orasund Bridge. One of the most significant bridges in Europe is the Orasundsbron, also known as the Orasund Bridge. One of the busiest border crossings connects Sweden and Denmark via this bridge. The Orasund Bridge connects Copenhagen, Denmark, Malmo, and Sweden. However, it happens to be the longest combined road and rail bridge on the continent. You can use a bus or train to cross the border and travel to Denmark for the day, in addition to using the bridge for a drive over. The stunning Orasand Bridge is a 15 minute drive from the heart of Malmo. The structure, which has been well known around the world, has become even more popular after years of development. The entire continent of Europe is now connected by this amazing architectural achievement between Sweden and Denmark. Furthermore, the bridge, which spans both rail and road, merges into a tunnel on the Danish side to avoid interfering with Copenhagen airport planes. You can now travel to the the neighboring country of Denmark through the bridge and tunnel and probably spend some time admiring Copenhagen's exquisite beauty. And now we have Visby. The town of Visby serves as the capital of Gotland, which is the largest island in Sweden. Simply because Visby has so much medieval architecture, it is however regarded as a popular holiday spot for Swedish people who live on the mainland. The city's 13th century ring wall is still in place and you can visit the Sancta church from that era, which is still in fairly good shape old church ruins, art galleries,
galleries, museums, and several restaurants to eat traditional Swedish food may all be found in Visby. The walled town is covered in roses and steeped in medieval history. Today, it has become a major appeal for tourists from all over the world. It is all too easy to lose your sense of being in the contemporary world when strolling the town's charming cobblestone streets. Numerous medieval merchant houses with steep gables and a few timber structures from the 17th and 18th centuries are still standing. Nonetheless, it is essential to take a self-guided or sightseeing tour of the majestic walls, which were built over 700 years ago. There are about 44 defensive towers built within the structure and two breaches in the walls, which are evidence of where an attack once occurred. Next on the list is Gamla Stan. If you only have one or two days to spend in Stockholm's capital city, be sure to spend them in the Gamla Stan neighborhood. In addition to numerous historically significant landmarks and attractions, the old town here offers stunning waterfront vistas. The 17th century royal palace, which houses the King of Sweden, is a sight to behold when in Gamla Stan. You can decide to visit the House of Nobility, tour the Stockholm Cathedral, and peruse the treasures and displays at the Museum of Medieval Stockholm. Gamla Stan, or the Old Town of Stockholm, is a compact, narrow area where the settlement first appeared in the middle of the 13th century. The medieval settlement is still largely intact. However, it is frequently freshly painted and brushed in traditional Scandinavian fashion. The architecture around its squares, particularly the major one, which is encircled by old merchant homes, along with its winding stone-paved alleyways and cobbled streets, is what gives it its appeal. Along with a ton of stores, eateries, and cafes, this district is home to the Nobel Museum, the Post Museum, the Royal Coin Cabinet, and a number of churches. In fact, there exist a thousand and one reasons to visit this town. And now for Uppsala Cathedral. The Uppsala Cathedral is the crowning jewel in the city of Uppsala. It has been expanded over the years with each era leaving its own mark. Neo-Gothic spires that were built in the late 19th century and stained glass windows from the same renovation era are its most prominent exterior elements. Hence, you can decide to observe the intricate carvings on the Baroque pulpit and pay a visit to the silver chamber in the North Tower, which houses a gold brocade gown. The city's medieval university is located directly across from the cathedral. It houses a vast range of items, including many tombs, as well as Viking weaponry, jewelry, and Egyptian artifacts. It also has a collection of artwork on the cultural history of Sweden. Next up, we have Lunds Cathedral. Lunds Cathedral is a magnificent example of Romanesque craft and is made of sandstone. It's been around for hundreds of years and is one of the most popular sites in a sometimes disregarded area. This cathedral is the most visited place in Sweden, as well as one of the most popular tourist destinations. The current structure was constructed in the 12th century. However, its superb carved cathedral from the 14th century was created by a North German artist. The oldest section of the cathedral is the crypt. Also, its roof is supported by carved stone pillars that feature sculptures that are typically thought to symbolize Finn, a mythical giant who is credited with building the church. The renowned astronomical clock from the 14th century is also located in the aisle. And finally, it's Stockholm City Hall. Stockholm City Hall, one of Sweden's most recognizable structures, was constructed between 1911 and 1923 using an unbelievable amount of bricks, approximated to be about 8 million. It is regarded as one of the finest instances of national romanticism. Three crowns grace the summit of the 106 meter tall tower. Furthermore, a very educational tour narrates part of its history and explains details of the annual Nobel Prize ceremony that takes place there. If you want to take a tour, you can view the Nobel Dinner's venue, the Blue Hall, as well as the Golden Hall, which is lined with 18 million gold mosaic tiles. However, the Royal Palace, which is situated on Queen's Island, is a great place for you to go if you want to travel even further back in time. Visitors can explore this over 600 room Baroque palace from the 18th century after a beautiful ferry trip. However, the Three Crowns Museum is known as the Museum of Antiquities, and the Armory and the Treasury are just a few of the museums in the city. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. Now you have seen some of the most beautiful places in Sweden. If you enjoyed the video, kindly click the like button and subscribe to my channel, and also press the bell icon to get new video updates.